So, hey team, welcome to our weekly Team Perseverance team call. It is August 14th, 2017. Uh, my name is Dave Atkins, the founding coach of Team Perseverance and one of your upline Star Diamond coaches. Excited to get on the call with you guys tonight. I just actually put a Facebook post up how I'm excited to share training with you guys and how we've been doing these calls every Monday since 2013. And there's over 200, I was looking, there's over 200 training calls that I have done that we have not stopped, that we've been relentless and consistent about. 200, over 200 that we're here to bring to you guys. Um, and I'm excited tonight to give you guys this training about expanding your network, which is, I think, something from a beginner coach to an advanced coach, something that we all can, in fact, work on um, each and every day to expand our network. So before I do that, a couple of announcements. Number one. Our next challenge group, remember, third Monday of the month, we start our, we start our um, third Monday of the month is our new our challenge group that starts. We always do it the third Monday. Why do we do that? Because it gives people time to hit Success Club and get Success Club, and it gives you three weeks. And with Beachbody On Demand Challenge Pack, that pretty much is 99% of the challenge packs that I pretty much sell at this point. We used to have a cutoff date about usually like our next challenge group starts one week from today. We would cut it off like Wednesday. But now with people with the all access, we let them purchase right up to the start, sometimes a day late. They would be without Shakeology at first, but that's okay. Then they would get it a couple days later, which leads into my second announcement, guys. I want to be very honest and real with all of you guys. And I want you to understand that if you truly – are serious about trying to build this business, my, my, my announcement to you guys today is you have to be hitting Success Club. Like it's not even, it's a non-negotiable. You cannot hit it for a month and not hit it for two months. You cannot hit it for one month, miss it for four months and disappear. It has to be every single month. You have to set the bar that you need to find three people a month. That's the only way that you're going to build this business and compound it over time for it to grow. This month, I'm working on my 70th, 7-0 month in a row in Success Club. I have failed time and time again. I'm sitting at two points right now. We're approaching the halfway point. I don't know, grit, termination, hustle, I'm gonna be doing it. But you are not gonna build this business to any type of sustainable income if you're not bringing in new people every month and hitting Success Club. And the training tonight's gonna go over how it can help you do that. But I'm just letting you know, if you're not hitting it, your business isn't growing, period. I'm not gonna, I, I used to, I'll be honest, and why I'm so serious about this, is I used to sugarcoat my new coaches when they would come in and the team and say, ah, you, you wanna do this, but if you don't, it's okay. I'm telling you now, I, I will tell my team and tell my coaches, not what they want to hear, what they need to hear. If you want to be successful and you want to grow, you must be hitting Success Club every month. Five points, that's it, three people. I'm not even telling you to get to 10 people because I built my business to where it is today. There was six-figure income, striving for six Success Club five and approaching, I don't know, six years. So that's my second most important announcement. Kristen and I were discussing it tonight as we were cleaning up dinner. I'm just challenging you all to go for it this month. There's still time. Next announcement, I said I'm going to be talking about it every single week, Coach Summit. Coach Summit next year is in Indianapolis. Did you get your ticket to Coach Summit? This is the biggest event of the year. If you have not, you need to go to CoachSummit.com and still take advantage of the discounted tickets and not worry about how you're going to get there, how you're going to afford it, if you're going to be able to get babysitting for your kids, if you are truly all in in this business, you figure out a way as it happens, right? If your job, whatever you're doing right now for a living, said in a month from now, you need to go away for training for a week and you didn't have a choice, you would be there. You would just figure it out. So you need to treat this coaching business, if you're serious, as if it's your full-time job while you're doing it as a part-time hustle, okay? You have to have the mindset that if I want this to be create a sustainable long-term income that I must treat it that it's my only source of income and I will find out. To say now that you can't get a Coach Summit ticket because you don't know where you're going to be 11 months from now is insanity. Like, 
your business can explode in six months. Get your ticket, get to Coach Summit, get it now. So that's my announcements. And next and most important, guys, is to get into recognition. So I want to get right into um, the people in Team Perseverance who have been leading. Let me just open up my notes here. Um, leading the team this past week, most importantly, in our cover photo, guys, if you see our top July coaches for the month of July, we have our top success club earner, Jessica Guzman, at 18 points. We have our top July recruiters with three new coaches each. We have Carla Thomas and Pamela Scanlon. Hopefully, Pamela, I pronounced that right. I'm always butchering names, but congratulations to Pamela, Carla, and Jessica for leading the team in the month of July. Um, and also, I want to give a shout out and go over the people with the weak leg team volume for this past week, which is going to be from August 3rd to August 9th. In the 300 Club, we have Sydney Larice, Devin Wheaton, Julia Carrera, Joan Carroza, Laura Fagan, Kimberly Ronaldson. In the 500 Club, Shannon Larice, Kelly Della Vecchia, Gina Strecco, Michelle Della Sala, Deirdre Pashley, Jeff Nolson, Kristen Atkins, Tony Carlucci, Kami Cowart, Bob Strecco, and Jen Holman. In the 1000 Club, we have Tara Richmond, Lindsay Kaufman, Sharice Nolson. In the 2000 Club, Denise Bropson, my second business center, Stacey Larice, and the 3000 Club, Kristen Atkins, Shauna Carlucci, and myself in the 10,000 Club. So guys, congratulations um, for being um, on the leaderboard. Now, I want to shift for a second before we get into the training. I just want to let you guys know, if you haven't heard, I don't, I don't mean to be somber, but I feel that we are family. We're like a second family. If you did not see our post on the Team Perseverance page, one of our diamond coaches, one of our leaders, um, it, it happens to be Kristen, my wife Kristen's best friend, um, Kelly Della Vecchia, was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, if those of you guys that have not heard, Kelly um, recently turned 40. Her 40th birthday was basically last weekend when she found out. She had Hodgkin's lymphoma less than two years ago and did chemo for a year and beat Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer. And now she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I can tell you she was at Sloan Kettering today and has a lot ahead of her um, in the coming year. So Kelly um, is a school teacher, as you guys know, with three little kids. Um, they do not have a sick leave bank um, in her school. And she was hoping that she'd be able to go back to school for her first day of work, which we found out today, to get some of her, her sick leave credits for her, per se. Um, and Kelly's surgery is going to be before that. She needs to have surgery. So I just, guys, a dollar, five dollars, whatever it could be, it doesn't matter. It could be 50 cents. We put up a go, what? Right. We put up a GoFundMe page. I put it on the team page. So I ask that if you could help, that'd be great. And also lots of prayers and keeping her in your thoughts and prayers and Kelly's family. She's hosted some of the team calls for us. It's a time we need to unite and come together. So I at least wanted to put that out there, not to be somber, but to be real with what's going on with the team um, and just to keep her, everybody in her thoughts and prayers. What? You want to come over and say? Kristen is just saying some stuff. Hi, guys. Um, and we just wanted to say thank you to all of you that did contribute already. We, we, Kelly appreciates it more than you can possibly ever know. She really does. And she's not the kind. She said she's the... Uh, the stubborn Italian who doesn't like to take hand me outs from people, but um, she could really use it. So thank you so much. And just lots of prayers, lots of good vibes. Just keep sending them her way. Thank you. All right, guys. So to shift um, into expanding your network, and thank you again for everybody. Um, expanding your network tonight. I'm going to get right into a PowerPoint. I hope everybody has a pen and paper to take some notes. So let me um, get this opened first. Bear with me. Okay, this, this, can everybody, who do I see on my screen? Everybody can see that, can get thumbs up from people? All right, good, I think I see Bonnie, thumbs up. All right, guys, so expanding your network um, is tonight's call topic, so I'm going to get into the first, whoop, I need to, hold on, guys, I need to just move, I need to just... 
where I see you guys because it was coming up. Okay, nope, don't do that. Okay, so the first thing, guys, is about not understanding the definition of a tribe. A tribe is a group of people connected to one another, connected to a leader, and connected to an idea. A group needs only two things to be a tribe, a shared interest and a way to communicate. This was a quote by Seth Godin in his book, From Tribes. And the key is, is like our team, Team Perseverance, is a tribe. Your team is a tribe, and you're trying to build your tribe going forward. So the next question is, and I, hold on, guys. I keep having, I'm having the same issue as you with these photos, babe. Uh, let's see. How can I? Uh, there we go. Oh, no. Hold on, guys. Sorry. It's not allowing me to do it. Maybe on this side. I'm sorry. The pictures keep covering up the screen. Let's try this. Nope. There we go. A tribe. Why it matters. It's how you build your tribe. It's how you create a platform for sustained business success. And it's how you have more fun as a coach. That's why it's important of connecting with your people. Next. Guiding principles. There's three guiding principles we're going to go over tonight. The first is that connection is critical. Meaning, guys, when you post, and we're going to get into this, it's about having that connective bond. It's not about just throwing up a photo and not sharing something that somebody can relate to. All right? Number two is you are your business. You are your brand. This is huge, guys. You are not Beachbody, you are not T25, you are not Sean T, you are not Tony Horton. Your profile picture should not be a picture of a Shakeology cup. You are you, you are your brand, you are an individual. That's the second thing we're gonna go over, and the third is about beating the drum, and that's gonna get into consistency. So the first thing, guys, connection is critical. You need to cut through the noise. Social media is a very, very busy, busy place. And if you look, and if you even look at yourself, people are scrolling on their phones super, super fast. To the point, I can tell you this, people no longer, they said, people no longer read left to right anymore. They read up and down. So that's why we teach you in Coach Basics, when you're posting and putting up a post, you do not want to write one long paragraph because people will not in fact read that. They're scrolling too fast. Breaking up something that is normally a paragraph in, say, your English class, but breaking it up into spaces and lines, people will read it and read it quickly. So connection is critical. Sorry, I went off a little bit there. Post alone won't expand your network or grow your business. What does that mean? I don't know. A selfie of your, you at your kid's soccer game and just putting words. You know, Addison's soccer game and no story behind it. It's unrelatable. It's noise. People are looking for people on the bottom. It says they, they connect with, not for people who want to sell them something. So if you post a, a selfie at the soccer field, I'm just making it up, and you barely made soccer in time, and you're a hot mess, and you ran out the door, and you forgot your kid's cleats, or you forgot the water bottle, and you share that story with the selfie, that's a connection because I know there's other parents there that have been through the same thing, okay? So you have to be posting and sharing a story. Next, you are your business. You are your brand, okay? Like I said, you are not Beachbody. You are you. Reflect on your social media what you want to represent to people. Guys, I could say with me, I'm a dad. I have three little girls. They, coach, they play sports. I coached my daughter Cassie's softball team. We won the championship game. I posted about that, how I enjoyed coaching. I talk about my daughter, Sadie, that's in a, in a competitive travel ice hockey team. Um, this morning, Kristen shared that she's in a very intense hockey clinic this week. We're, that's our brand. We're parents. We're little kids. We're always on the go. I'm with the state police. You know, I love inspiring and motivating people. That's my videos that I like to do. You have to decide on what you want to represent and who you are. And people decide, second point, to buy you before they decide to buy anything from you. Guys, think about this. I really want you to think about this. If we're all selling the same Shakeology and the same Beachbody On Demand with the same programs, 
What is the difference between you and another coach? The difference is you. You are the difference. That's what separates you from everybody else is you. So you need to ask yourself, is this post reinforcing building my brand or is it eroding it? Would you follow yourself if you weren't, like if you were to go to your newsfeed right now, would you follow yourself? Would you want to come back and look at this person and what they're doing each day or does the person post once every three days? Does the, post in, post in, does the person post something, you, that there's no story, there's no connectivity? You got to ask yourself that. Next, beating the drum. You must show up every day and be consistent in the topics you post about. Guys, these team calls, over 200 calls since 2013 have not stopped. It's the consistency every single day. It's posting every single day, no matter what. You're going to have life moments that are going to knock you down. You're going to have death that happens in your family. I'm just going to call it. You're going to have sickness. You're going to have people losing their jobs. But that's the real test. People want to see, are you sharing that? Are you still showing up, getting your workouts in, putting your fitness first? Do they really see that you're truly a coach that wants to help people because you, in fact, in the hardest times, are sharing what, in fact, you're doing? Second point, repetition develops skills. People all the time, David, I'm not good at posting. How did you do it? You're in law enforcement. How did you get to where you are? I just kept doing it, and I kept failing, but I failed forward, okay? Third point, consistency builds followers. When you're consistent every single day, more people will follow you. And when you have followers, it's going to create your tribe. Next, your initial warm market is comprised of your family, friends, and acquaintances. This is mostly for like the newer coaches, but I think this applies to everybody, okay? Expand your warm market quickly on social media, excuse me, on social media by... Look for friends of friends on Facebook. Guys, I still do this today. I did it recently. I went to people I went to college with, and I looked, I clicked on one of their profiles, and I scrolled who their friends were, and I looked for somebody that we had mutual friends in common or somebody like, wow, I remember that guy from college. I'm not going to just reach out to them and invite them to a challenge group right now, but I'll send them a friend request and try to start building more of a warm market. Second point, use a memory jogger to identify people you know but you aren't connected to on social media and then send them a friend request or follow them. What's the memory jogger? That's a document that's in Coach Basics. If you go in your back office, your coach online office, under the news and training tab, um, below that, click on that, then click on training and go to training materials. You will see the memory jogger. It helps you think of people that you may not have think of, like your local barber, your person you get your dry cleaning from, or places where you eat. It's a memory jogger. Number three, don't forget the power of in-person connections. People you speak to every day, the power of wear and share. I can't tell you how many times I've wore. Right now, I have our team shirt on. On the back, there's, um, oh, this is the Coach Summit one. Our other team shirt on the back is all the logos of the programs. People will recognize that brand. It's a great way to start conversation, wear and share. Next, on a pro tip on the bottom, build your tribe from day one with people you want to associate with. Before you send a friend request or follow them, make sure to look at their social media to see if there's someone you like to connect with and who has similar interests and values to you. Then once you connected with them, send them a quick note to say hello and point out what you saw on their page that you liked or that resonated with you. I love that. So if you send a friend request to somebody and they accept it, go to their page. Maybe they have kids your age. Send them a thank you message for accepting your friend request and say, I saw you went camping with your kids. How was it? I'm looking forward to going camping with my kids. There's always something you can find a connection with you and that person. Find the connective tissue, the bridge, send the thank you after a friend request, and just start the conversation. That's it. If you are doing this every day, Week after week, eventually the people that you invited four weeks ago will be great candidates to invite them because you built the foundation. But it's consistency and it's repetition. Social media best practices. You can download and review the social media best practices guide from the coaches in the coach online office training library, like the, where the memory jogger is. It's under the news and training tab again. 
under training. And then we're going to go over right now, how should my post look? What's the best type of post for my social media platform? What should I post about? What are the do's and don'ts for my post that I should know? First, guys, you need to develop a clear and consistent identity, meaning who are you and who are you looking to speak to? Create clarity and focus for what you want to represent on social media. Focus on key interests, on a few key interests and values you have to be more memorable and make connections. Consistently posting about them and theming posts around these values will help you great brand, great, build greater brand awareness, excuse me, and stand for something in people's minds. So the first thing to help identify what to post about and create brand awareness, what are your top five interests, all right? Not related to coaching. This is what I post about most, okay? Post about these things daily. The consistency will create credibility and strengthen your brand recognition and attract similar people. Second, search hashtags on Instagram to find people to connect with who have similar interests as you. And third, search for and join Facebook groups that share these interests. Guys, I can tell you, I can search. You guys know I have a yellow lab, Harbor. He turned two this summer. He's my only son. I always joke about that. I could search Yellow Labrador in Facebook and find Yellow Labrador Facebook groups and connect with thousands of people just popping in those groups every day and not to sell them anything, but just to have more connections and build friendships and maybe send some friend requests and the connective tissue is the Yellow Lab, right? And then, you know, you build on from there. Next, what five words best describes you? How my posts feel? Sprinkle these words as often as is appropriate in your post to help your brand clearly stand for something in people's minds. Meaning, you have to have emotion and meaning behind your posts, okay? The selfie of at my kid's soccer game, there's no feeling to that. But talking about the struggle of barely getting there and you left your kid's cleats at home or forgot their water bottle, you're talking about one of the top interests of being a parent, you're talking about how you feel, you know, you know, epic, epic failure, you know, epic dad failure or whatever it is, dad of the year, you know, search these words. And the second point for related hashtags on Instagram to connect with people who are similar personality. Okay. You have to have emotion, connective tissue to you. And again, guys, this is to help you get through the noise. And what are your top five core values? Why I post on the right. Reflect these values in your post as appropriate to give depth to your brand and increase brand loyalty. People are moved by mission, by purpose, and they're loyal to brands that have that. Guys, my purpose and my mission every single day is to add value to somebody's life. And I always say before I go to bed and I put my head down on the pillow, did I give something today to add somebody in value? For me, it's video, guys. That's just natural for me. That's speaking to me. Basically, every single day, at least once, I'm live. I go live. I share probably a workout I did, my personal development. I take something I learned from that, how it applies to my life, and how I can give back into the value. That's part of my brand. People know that. People tell me they come to my page, they watch my videos for inspiration and just keeping it real. And, if I'm, and I'm getting even better. If I'm struggling, I'm struggling. I'll share it. Okay? Next. Know who you want to attract and find. Create a detailed profile description, AKA is your avatar, of who your ideal customer or coach would be. So if you were to write a list after this call, who is the perfect person? I can tell you for me, it's probably a mom or dad in their 30s or 40s with young kids that have the dad bod or the mom that can't get rid of the baby weight that either haven't worked out in years or working out a little bit and it hasn't worked, that are struggling to get by, whose nutrition's a disaster, who are stressed out, strung out, that they don't have time to exercise, right? And just trying to survive as parents. That's my brand. That's my avatar. My avatar is not a 21-year-old person just getting out of college that's single. It's not. What is your avatar? You have to think of your detailed profile description of your avatar. And when you do this, guys, this is not a real person, but a composite of the characteristics and descriptions. I'm reading the second point 
of the person you want to attract, find, and have as a part of your business. Know who you want to attract. To create an effective avatar, really put yourself in that customer coach's shoes. Go deep into the physiology um, of the ideal customer coach to really get to know them. Why? Because it will make your post more impactful and effective. When you speak to your avatar in each post, when that person sees the post, it will be like you're reading their mind. They'll connect almost instantly with you and your brand. Guys, what does this mean? You can't be posting and trying to reach the masses, okay? You have to be speaking to your avatar, your people, right? Like I told you, parents, for me, you, you have to be speaking to your people so they immediately connect, all right? I'm not speaking to a 70-year-old, 60-year-old person. I'm not speaking to a high school or college kid. I'm talking to people that are in where Kristen and I were. And that's another thing. Your avatar, you have to think about of where you were before Beachbody. If you have a success story and you're like your after photo and Beachbody's giving you success, don't talk to your after person who you were before. If you're somebody that's just starting your journey, then basically you have to find people that are exactly where you are right now and talking to the people that are struggling what you struggle with. Know who you want to attract. This is some ideas to create your avatar. Demographics, what's their age, gender, marital status, do they have kids, education level, physical description, social or cultural interest. What are their interests or hobbies? What do they spend a lot of time doing? What do they enjoy doing? What do they do for work? Personality type, what type of personality do you want to speak to? Words that describe this person. What is the best way you would describe the person if you had to summarize it? An in-depth understanding. What are their top three priorities right now? What are their goals? What gets them excited? What keeps them up at night? What do they hope to see in other people? What do they hope not to see? And how can you help them as their coach? What would be their interest as a customer? What would be their interest as a coach? And what hesitations would they have? Think of you before you started. This is how you write down and create an avatar. Here's an example of two avatars. Here's Caitlin, 27 years old, newly married, loves animals, fun-loving, carefree, but shy at first and stresses about random things, wants to lose to 15 to 10 pounds, excuse me, 5 to 15 pounds, hates scary movies, just started her first real job, feels like something is missing. This is a, an avatar. This is a detailed description. This person doesn't really exist, but this is who you are speaking to. It helps you identify your audience, who you want to connect with, and who you're speaking to. When writing your posts in the bottom in bold, keep your avatar in mind. Speak to them as a good friend as you share your common interests, your feelings, your hopes, your dreams, your fears, etc. And number three, gather your tribe. Gathering your tribe will be a combination of you finding them and them finding you. Use the interest values you identified for yourself in step one to help you focus on what to share on social and the key descriptive words to reflect you. Use the avatar you created in step two to help you create posts that connect with people you want in your tribe, right? You can't speak to the masses. Gathering your tribe. This is part three, how to do it. Let's go over Instagram first. Instagram is a mobile-based media sharing app that connects people through pictures, video, and hashtags. Google some basic best practices on taking good pictures with your phone and then use filters and image editing apps to make your pictures pop. The My favorite app is PhotoFy, P-H-O-T-O-F-Y, if you don't have it, PhotoFy, F-Y. And guys, pay the extra dollar and get the watermark logo of PhotoFy off the corner just so it looks, it looks authentic from you. Number three, Take the time to research and select hashtags that are relevant to your avatar and to what you want to promote to connect you with the people you want in your business. Use hashtags to target and attract your avatar. Here's some tips on hashtags. Create a list of 11 to 25 hashtags that you'll use with every post, okay? Use Instagram's search feature to search for hashtags related to your five interests, descriptors, values from step one that we did tonight and related to your avatar description that you created in step two. Ideally, you want to select hashtags from your search that have between five and 70,000 posts using them 
So your posts have enough people viewing them, but not so many that they get lost with all the other posts people are making. For example, hashtag fitness probably is in the tens of millions of posts. Nobody will see it. Okay, five to 70,000 is a good way. When you search, Instagram gives you that feature. As people engage with your post, look at their profile, and if there's somebody you'd like to connect with, like some of their posts, direct message them, and see if you can start up a conversation. Next, the remaining five hashtags available to you on each post, you can have 30 total, should be connected to or describe the image or content of your post, if it wasn't covered by the other hashtags. So you have 25 related to your avatar and your description, right? And then five related to whatever you're doing. At Addison's soccer game again, Kristen posts, I don't know, hashtag soccer mom, okay? Five of them related. Next, use hashtags to find your avatar. Look at the other people who are using the same hashtags you've chosen for yourself. Search for companies or brands you like and see who else is engaging with their content. Look at people you don't know who are engaging with your friends' posts. Pro tip, don't just follow someone because they use the same hashtag. Like the same things or know someone you know. Make sure to take a quick look at their profile. If it looks like someone you'd like to connect with, first like and or comment on two or three of their posts and follow up with a direct message to try and start a conversation. Guys, can I just say that if you spend five minutes a day you can do this and search hashtags and connect with five new people. Like literally, five minutes of your time. Instead of scrolling Instagram, if you're an Instagram person using hashtags, you can search, look at people's profiles and send five direct messages and like a couple photos and start connecting with people, okay? It's easy to do, but it's also easy not to do. Don't fall in the trap, be consistent, Every day, connect with a couple new people. Facebook. Facebook is still the biggest monster with social media, guys. It's mobile and desktop application. Connects people through pictures, video, link sharing, and text posts. It offers a platform for deeper connections and richer content. It gives greater control to its users to organize their friends in groups, on promote online events, and create business pages. Join groups. Using the interests and descriptors you identified for yourself and your avatar, search for for related groups on Facebook, like I mentioned, the Yellow Lab, right? Try to join two to three groups for every interest you identified with and start at least five new conversations a day, okay? If you're a Facebook person, connect with new people every day. Don't, don't, don't try and sell in these groups. Remember, these are just a place for you to meet new people. Jump into the conversations happening, add value to the group, give sincere comments and compliments. Again, five, 10 minutes you can spend here. This is what it's called if you work a power hour or if you really wanna work on building your business is doing these things, constantly adding people to your network. Next, being seen is so important. Facebook uses an algorithm to try and surface to the top of a user's newsfeed the content it thinks will be of greatest interest to them. That is important because the higher your post appears, it appears and appears in someone's newsfeed, the more likely they'll see it. To help your post be seen by more people, think of two words, consistency and engagement. To help your post be seen by more people outside your network, you can change the privacy setting from friends to public, and keep in mind, any post with a public privacy setting can be, set, can be seen by anyone on or off Facebook. So guys, I always say, and this isn't in the training here, negativity, drama, politics, um, rants, or anything negative, airing, you know, like sharing your struggles is one thing, but getting caught in, you know, I hate the world right now, this sucks, you know, if, so, if I could just catch one break, you know, you don't need, like, nobody, at the end of the day, I'll be honest, nobody cares, and you, you attract who you are, so if you want to attract negative and drama, be negative and dramatic on social media. If you go to my page, there's nothing really negative. If I'm struggling, I'm sharing it, but I'm doing it in a positive light, that I'm working through it, I'm coming up with a solution, all right? Stay away from negativity, stuff on the news, I'll be honest, you will lose people, okay? Even if you have an opinion. Next, being seen. 
Um, whoop, I think I hit this one. Ready? Let's see. Consistency. Facebook likes people who are consistently engaging with the platform and sharing content. Look at your interests and values identified in step one and post about those th things consistently three to five times a day to establish a stronger brand awareness for your coaching business. Gather your tribe, engagement, posts that get reactions. Now guys, look at the right hand side. Reactions are all those things except the like button. Are rated by Facebook to be more valuable than posts that get likes or no engagement at all, of course. Posts that are vulnerable, funny or emotional will get more reactions than posts that are just informative. Facebook likes videos, especially live videos on the platform. They give that a very high ranking in the algorithm. While videos get preference in the newsfeed, Facebook also looks at the completion percentage when people watch a video to help decide whether to push it up or down the newsfeed, meaning are people watching what you're doing to the end. Facebook video tips, create videos about engaging content, create curiosity with your text and your video post to want it to want to watch it to find out more. Shailene Johnson at Summit really spoke about that. P sp uh, sparking people's interest is huge. And next, try to keep your video short to improve its completion percentage. Next, create curiosity to stand out. There was a lot of noise in social media. More people are using it as a platform to promote their businesses and products. As a result, Social media tuning out messages that come on too strongly with a sales-related message, i.e. posting your website. Don't post your website. Don't post buy from me. T25 uh, Shift Shop's the greatest program of ever. It's on sale. Get it through me. Like, no, don't do that. Share your journey and you can share the workout you're doing in reference 21 uh, uh, Shift Shop, but don't do that being salesy. To stand out, your post shouldn't try to sell. They need to build connections and create curiosity. You want to hint out what you're excited about, what you've got going on, without giving away all the details. Spark their interest. Once somebody shows curiosity, take the conversation offline through direct messaging, text, or phone call. Next, gather your tribe through breadcrumbing. A great way to create curiosity is to hint at or speak in general terms about your story and the benefits of Beachbody and coaching. As you drop, quote unquote, breadcrumbs of information, it leads people thinking by giving enough information to have some understanding, but they're curious. There are a lot of breadcrumbing trainings on the internet, but consider these simple best practices. First, look at the interest values you listed in step one and identify five ways that Beachbody has positively impacted those things. When you post, try to mention at least one of them. Make sure to share feelings and emotion to create curiosity and invite people to ask for more details, open the door to discussion. Here's an example of breadcrumbing. The interest is being a great mom, description is caring, values freedom. This does not create curiosity on the left. This morning I made this healthy breakfast for my kids and they loved it. I'm so grateful for the freedom I have thanks to my coaching business to spend mornings like this with my family. I focus on helping people each month to reach the health and fitness goals and the income it generates has allowed me to stay home so I can have mornings like this. That's not curiosity. Curiosity is this. I used to never have time to fix a healthy breakfast for my kids. I'd run out the door to work feeling a little guilty that we're starting the day on cereal. I made a decision a year ago that changed that, a decision anyone can make. Today, I'm not rushing out the door. My kids get all of me every morning, and I'm so incredibly grateful for that. Maybe now is the moment for you to make the same decision I did. I've got the information ready to share with you if it is. That is a great curiosity thing because nobody knows what it is okay so that let me stop the share here that is the best way to expand your network on both instagram and facebook consistency is key repetition is key being vulnerable is key sharing you you is your key all right i did put up like a post in our Team Perseverance page a couple days ago, like, I just want to scream because I see so many coaches outside this team and even on this team that, and trust me, I was there, but it's like a photo, I don't know, a photo, you're at an amusement park, and it's just you, with well, your kids at an amusement park. Like, I can say right now, 
My wife, Kristen, is a lot better at really being, at posting good stuff. I'm more like the video, but she dives in. Go look at her page. You know, see how we break up. She spaces things out, which I've got better at that. It's always a growing thing, but you have to create curiosity. You have to breadcrumb. You have to connect people to you. You have to have them relate to you because the difference between you and every other coach is you, right? So um, before I wrap up and kind of finish this call, are there any questions on any of this stuff in general or any questions regarding anything um, with the business or coaching that I can help you guys with? I'm here to help. So just um, unmute your line and um, uh, unmute your line. I'm trying to get this off screen mode. Let me see. Anybody? There's no questions. I had a question. I posted it in the comments. I know, okay. I didn't see it. Aaron. Um, I do Facebook Lives like every day. Yeah. And I was just wondering if you have any knowledge about what the ideal length is. No, I know that they say in the beginning to get it up, it should be two minutes or less. So maybe that is an ideal length until okay. you get people in there. But it's really the content. Yeah. That you, put out. you know, it's really going to come down to carrying the content uh -huh. that you put out. But um, yeah, in the beginning to get guys, I've read that two minutes or less. Um, if you could do that to start out, that'd be great. I'll be honest, guys. I'll tell you right now, I can never keep that's a video short. for two minutes. It is short. Two minutes. Is sh yeah, that's short. short. <laughs> but, you, know, you, okay. see how many, you see how many people, Karen, are on watching you. And when uh -huh. you start dropping off, you know that you lost engagement. It doesn't mean you should just end right. it, you know, but it kind of gives you a mental, mental note going forward for next time. Yeah. Okay, thanks. No problem. Anybody else unmute their line? Anything? David, it's Matt. Uh, just a quick question. Um, can you post those slides to the Facebook page? Just so I can, when you're working through the avatar stuff, it was hard to kind of keep all those notes. It would be great to be able to kind of quickly go through them and reference it. What I'll do is, well, as soon as I hang up, I will upload them to the Team Perseverance page, the power. Awesome. Thank yep. you. You guys will have them. Sounds good. Um, who else? Anybody? 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 Going once, going twice. All right, guys, if there's no questions, I'm going to upload it um, to the page. Challenge group starts Monday. Hit freaking success club, guys. You have it in you. I know you do. Come on now. If this dude right here can do it, trust me. I was horrendous at social media a couple of years ago. I just figured it out and it works out. There's people out there that need you. Trust me. It doesn't matter if you're a coach or a superstar diamond. I've said this at summit on the stage. There are people out there that need you in their life. They're there. They're waiting for you. There's millions of people. We have an obesity and overweight problem in this country, in this world. Help people. People need you. Trust me when I tell you there's people that need you as an individual. As hard as it is sometimes, there's people that need you. Guys, have an amazing um, rest of your Monday night. And I love all you guys, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.